Hi, everybody. I'm Dan Wells. I write horror, fantasy, and science fiction, and I talk about games on the internet. Today, we're going to talk about Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus, which is the new, I say new, it's several months old at this point, but the newest big giant campaign for D&D. Uh, it is, takes players from level 1 up to 13 and beyond, takes you down into the depths of hell, gets you involved with all kinds of shenanigans and uh, kind of infernal war. And there's a lot of really fascinating ideas and a lot of really incredible set pieces. And more than anything else, this campaign is unique. This doesn't remotely resemble any other campaign, professionally published D&D &D campaign that you've ever played through. This is its own new thing. That said, it's kind of a giant mess. There's a lot uh, to recommend it, but there's a lot of problems as well. Uh, one of those problems goes to what I consider the, the core issue with published campaigns, which is this is not easy to run. This is, in fact, the most difficult D&D campaign to pick up, read the book, and run that I think they have ever published. Uh, and what that says to me is that it doesn't have a clear audience. If you are a brand new first time game master, then this is gonna punch you in the face and call you names. This is so hard to figure out what you're supposed to do. Um, to their credit, every chapter begins and, and, you know, the entire campaign is split into like five chapters. Every chapter begins with a flowchart to kind of walk you through and say, okay, do this, and then this, and then this. And each one of those steps is kind of uh, marked with what level of PC it is ideal for. And so, on the one hand, yes, you kind of always know from moment to moment what you're going to be doing. Uh, one, of the, one of the big problems is that you almost never know why, uh, especially in the beginning. This game starts off by saying, well, the characters are in Baldur's Gate and are pressed into service as City Watch. Why? There is no good reason why. Um, where do you come from? This campaign doesn't care. Um, there's just, it throws you in and then kind of just moves in a very railroady fashion for quite a while. Once you get into hell itself, then your options open up pretty significantly, and there's a lot of different things you can do. But getting you to hell is just one dungeon after another, and then you will get out of it, and they'll say, well, if you want the next clue, you gotta go here. And if you don't want the next clue, then there's no campaign left. The, the, the motivational links from section to section are faulting. So it takes a lot of work to run this. Um, and a first time GM, I really worry, is gonna see this and just not have any idea what to do or how to start. On the other hand, if you are an experienced game master who's been doing this for a long time, well then what do you need this book for, right? Um, for me, as a game master, published adventures are valuable because they take a load off of my back, right? I don't have to spend all of this time figuring out what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it because I can just open the book and say, oh, good, tonight's you know game session is going to be easy because here I know what to do next. And Descent into Avernus doesn't really help with that either because there is so much prep work you have to do in advance. Uh, there's so many links that you have to find or just forge on your own because they're not in the book. And so I don't know who to recommend this game to, but I'm going to recommend it anyway. Uh, so I guess I'm recommending it to people who want the uniqueness, people who want the fun story, people who want to go into hell and ride around in these infernal war machines and have chases and, and things uh, with giant city tanks 
that run on Souls of the Damned. Like, the ideas in it are so cool that it kind of makes it worth it to patch up all the holes and figure out what you're going to do. So let's take a look at a couple of the things in here. So um, this is the D&D Beyond version, okay? And uh, I do strongly recommend D&D Beyond in general, kind of over physical books just as a rule. Um, I love D&D Beyond so much. It is so valuable. Uh, I can't think of a single situation in which I would rather have the physical book than the digital one. Um, now, that said, I also want to put in a plug here for the Roll20 version. I have run this campaign, uh, still haven't finished it yet, in Roll20, and the Roll20 edition is fantastic. It's produced by Wizards. It has all the maps. It has all of the, you know, kind of already built with tokens and with line of sight things worked out, and it's very easy to just plug and play that aspect of it. So, big ups to them for that. Um, now, here's what I was talking about with the flowchart. Here in Chapter 1, this flowchart, like I said, is just a railroad. It's just a list of things. There's no branches. There's no decisions of any kind. Uh, you move on to the next thing, or you stop playing the adventure. Um, this is also... <laughs> Read or paraphrase the following box text to your players to start the adventure? That's asinine. Nobody wants to read one, two, three, four, five giant paragraphs of box text at any point in an adventure, let alone in the beginning of one. Uh, this adventure really does not know how to get started or what to do. Um, one thing, though, that uh, this adventure does do well in the beginning, and let's say that, is that there's a fantastic Baldur's Gate Gazetteer right here. It's enormous. You will not use it for anything. And maybe that's why it has the Baldur's Gate um, listed as part of the title. Baldur's Gate colon Descent into Avernus. You will play a couple of dungeons and you will deal with like one gang and then you'll leave Baldur's Gate immediately and you will never go back. And so this enormous 50, 60 page gazetteer is incredibly useful for other campaigns, not for this one. Um, and it is, I think, the best and most useful part of the book. Um, but it, it feels, it, it just to me kind of underlines how much the campaign itself doesn't understand the needs of the players who will be running it. Um, because, no, we don't need 50 pages of information about how Baldur's Gate is set up. What we need is some kind of good beginning that will help get us into this story in a way that makes sense, and then some good motivational hooks that will move us on to the rest of the story. Um, I, I, like I say, I, I have one campaign going right now in Roll20, if I had it to do over again, or the next time I get to run this, I will seriously consider just starting the characters in El Terrell because Baldur's Gate is entirely peripheral to the story in every way. Uh, starting characters off with some kind of meaningful narrative background that ties into Baldur's Gate and uses all of this incredible information is kind of a waste because then the story doesn't use that background, that information, or any of those NPCs at all. Uh, in fact, as the story goes on, that's one of my other big problems with it, is it doesn't matter who the characters are because they are never going to be talking to anyone. Their backstories are never going to matter. Their character arcs, in large part, aren't going to go anywhere because the story drives everything and it entirely takes place, like I said, in hell. And so none of the people that you know matter. Um, you know, none of the kind of classic character arcs like I'm going to reclaim my family's lands or I'm going to uh, earn honor for my father or I'm going to fall in love, none of that. Uh, none of that is even possible 
because you're going to spend all your time in a different place that is populated by monsters and so it the what this campaign really needs more than anything else is a good section on how to create characters and what kinds of characters to create and how to tell stories about those characters in an environment where they can certainly grow and change but not in any of the traditional ways um i on the other hand i do think it's important to point out that this campaign gives you a lot of adventure like i said it's full of really great set pieces it's full of really exciting ideas it has these very cool locations and so if you are in a group that doesn't care as much about role playing and is much more into the dungeon crawl hack and slash let's go kill some monsters kind of thing this is going to scratch that itch for you and it's going to scratch it really effectively so maybe part of my problem with this campaign is that it doesn't fit the style of role playing that I like um once you get into those final sections let's take back take a look back here again at the uh, table of contents chapter one uh tale of two cities this is uh, all baldur's gate where you are in you know levels one through four then elturel five and six and elturel's already kind of in hell and then you get into avernus and this will take you you know chapter three up i can't remember exactly how high the the levels go in this one um because i haven't finished chapter three yet with my campaign um but that goes pretty far and then uh sort of zeriel is like i think this goes up to 10. so this goes 7 8 9 10 and then sort of zeriel is 11 12 and then escape from Vernus is 13 and beyond um there's a lot to do but there's not a lot of people to talk to um and so I do think that one of the keys, one of the absolute keys to making this campaign work is that you have to set the right expectations for your players in the beginning. And that includes character creation. If somebody wants to be a ranger, maybe you don't want to be a ranger in this one because your preferred terrain will never show up. And if your favorite enemy is something other than demon and devil, you're never going to fight it. Um, but if you tell them up front, well, guess what? We're going to hell, so make sure your favorite enemy is a devil. And make sure that your favored terrain is, I don't know, volcanic wasteland, something like that. Um, then with the right kind of establishment up front, that can work. And then you have to have this whole discussion about, well, why does the ranger know that terrain so well and why does the ranger hate devils and is so good at fighting them well we can get into that and we can build you a character background that matters to the campaign that has something valuable to do with the story and that can organically grow and change while you spend you know 10 levels in the nine pits of hell now, on the there's something to be said for that kind of Sam Gamgee, I'm a farmer going to Mordor kind of idea, um, but yeah, it just does it doesn't work as well as you think it's going to work. So don't tell me I'm wrong, <laughs> because I've played this and I know. Um, anyway, the uh, the ideas are there, the meat is there. The really fantastic set pieces <clears throat> and dungeons are all there. In fact, the art is there, and the art is incredible in this book. Uh, and that's one of the things that makes it so exciting is that you're going to want, you're going to flip through this, or you're going to click around in here and say, you know, let, let's see if we can find other locations. Let's, let's show off some art. See? That's awesome. I want to go there and I want to see that thing. And so, yes, there's a lot of good reasons to want to play this game and 
go to all these fantastic locations and do and see all this stuff. It's just, it's, I think one of the reasons that it works and doesn't work is that initial thing I said that it is unique. It's incredibly new. It's incredibly cool. And that means that you're going to have to play it and set it up in a different way than any other RPG campaign you've ever done before. And the book itself is not going to help you with any of that setup uh, because it is it presents all of the newness without any guidance in how to make that newness work for your players. So, like I said, anyway, I do like this overall. I do think that it is valuable, and I also think that wizards should be rewarded for doing something so innovative, uh, for presenting the kind of role-playing campaign that uh, we've never seen before. Because honestly, at this point, we kind of feel like we've seen it all. And so this big epic thing that takes you down into the depths of hell where you're fighting gods and and redeeming fallen angels and like all these other amazing things going on, uh, that's awesome. And we want to be a part of that. Uh, they did not stick the landing on presenting those ideas. But if you are willing as a game master and as a player to put in the work to polish those rough edges and fill in the gaps and make this work, it can absolutely work really, really well. So, Descent into Avernus, Baldur's Gate, Descent into Avernus, uh, really enormous, really ambitious campaign from Wizards of the Coast that uh, if you want to do that work can absolutely pay off for you and I do recommend it in the end. Uh, so anyway, thanks for watching this review. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. My name is Dan Wells and you are awesome.